I never thought betrayal would come wrapped in the guise of friendship. It's always the people closest to you who can truly wound you, and for me, it was Ethan, my best friend since college, the person I had trusted with everything, including my biggest idea yet. We met on the first day of freshman year. Ethan was the loud one, always cracking jokes, while I was quieter, more focused on what I'd come to study, entrepreneurship. We made a good team. He was full of ideas, most of them half-baked, and I was the one who actually got things done. I didn't mind it. In fact, I liked it. We laughed about it, and over late night ramen in our tiny dorm room, we dreamed of the day we'd make it big together. When college ended, we both ended up at different tech firms. Ethan went to a flashy startup that was always making headlines, while I joined a smaller, more stable company that worked on behind the scenes software solutions. We kept in touch, of course, and those late night calls and messages were still filled with our plans, building something of our own, a company that would redefine an industry. We were both tired of working for someone else, waiting for promotions that came too slowly, drowning in meetings that never seemed to accomplish anything. It all started two years ago when I finally had it. The idea that kept me up at night, the one that felt so real that I could almost see it taking shape before me. I called it Green Spring, a service that matched restaurants with local farmers, simplifying their supply chains and focusing on farm-to-table ingredients, a personalized, tech-driven platform that cut out all the bureaucracy. I told Ethan about it one night when we were sitting on his apartment balcony, sharing a couple of beers. His eyes widened as I laid it out, explaining how I would connect small farmers to local restaurants in ways that bypass the bloated distribution system. He asked questions the right ones, the kind that pushed me to refine my pitch. And he said it was brilliant. The idea seemed to click in his head just as much as it did in mine. He looked proud of me, excited even. I had no reason to think anything else. But then, Ethan went dark. He wasn't responding to my messages, which I thought was strange. I figured he might be overwhelmed with work, maybe even burnt out. A month later, I was scrolling through my LinkedIn feed when I saw it, a post from Ethan. He was smiling for a picture, shaking hands with a prominent local investor. The caption boasted about his new startup, Fresh Roots, and how they were going to revolutionize the farm-to-table supply chain. My heart sank into my stomach, and I couldn't breathe for a second. I read the caption again, and then again. The words blurred on my phone screen, and I felt my fingers trembling. Fresh Roots. My idea. Ethan was taking it public smiling for pictures as though this concept had been his all along. I called him right away and the line rang and rang before he picked up. I kept my voice level, though I could feel my chest tightening. I asked him what the hell was going on and he sighed before answering. He acted like it was nothing personal, like he was doing me a favor. He said I had been too slow, that the market was moving and the opportunity wouldn't wait. He actually said that he was cutting me in that I could join him as a co-founder if I wanted, but that the company was his now. I hung up. I was furious, but worse than that, I felt betrayed. This was the guy who'd been my best friend for almost a decade, and now he'd stolen everything I'd worked for, all for the sake of getting ahead a little faster. I spent the next week feeling like I'd been gutted, angry and empty at the same time. It hurt to see fresh roots everywhere, gaining momentum, Ethan plastered all over articles that praised his supposed innovation and vision. It seemed like he was getting everything he'd always wanted, but at my expense. I was ready to quit. I felt defeated, as though every late night and early morning I'd spent on Greenspring had gone to waste. But then, one day, I think I was scrolling through yet another article about Ethan's supposed brilliance. A kind of calm came over me. Why should I quit? Just because Ethan had stolen my idea didn't mean I couldn't make something of my own. I still believed in Greenspring, and I knew I could make it work, better than anything he could come up with, anything he could. So that's what I did. I quit my job and went all in. I emptied out my savings and used every contact I'd made at the tech firm to start building Greenspring from scratch. But this time, I did it differently. I knew I couldn't match fresh roots for Flash or Investor Buzz. Ethan had taken care of that. But I knew there were holes in his plan, things he hadn't thought through because he was so focused on being first. Ethan had always been impulsive. He didn't bother to take the time to understand the people involved, only the numbers. I knew that's where I could outdo him. I focused on building relationships, 
actually talking to farmers and restaurant owners, finding out what they needed, what they hated about the current system. I made sure my tech was simple and intuitive, designed for the people who'd actually use it, not just investors who'd look at a demo. I started small, one city at a time, signing up local farmers who were frustrated by Fresh Roots' clunky, overpriced system. Ethan had focused on big, splashy restaurant chains. I focused on small, passionate chefs who cared about quality. It was hard. Those early days, I barely slept. And I lived off instant noodles and whatever free samples the farmers were kind enough to offer me. I wasn't making any headlines and there was no investor money coming my way. But slowly, I built a network. The farmers trusted me. The chefs loved the personal touch. My software was tailored to them, not to some idealized version of what a supply chain should be. And it worked. Six months in, I knew Greenspring was getting traction. I could see it in the way Fresh Roots was starting to stumble. Farmers dropping out, restaurants switching to us because they were tired of dealing with Ethan's convoluted contracts and hidden fees. Greenspring was lean, adaptable, and focused on the people that mattered. Ethan kept expanding trying to take over more markets without fixing the problems at the core of his business. The turning point came when a prominent local chef, someone with a huge social media following, posted about switching from Fresh Roots to Greenspring. She praised our customer service, the quality of the produce, and, most importantly, how we treated people fairly. That post went viral, and suddenly, I was the one getting calls from journalists, requests for interviews. Investors started reaching out, quietly at first, because no one wanted to admit they might have backed the wrong horse. But it was clear, to anyone paying attention, that Fresh Roots was on the decline. Ethan tried to reach out. He called. He sent emails. He even showed up at my apartment one night, drunk and angry, demanding that I make this right. I remember standing in the doorway, looking at the person who used to be my best friend and feeling nothing. There was no satisfaction in seeing him like that. No sense of triumph, just emptiness, and maybe a little pity. He'd always been like this, really, chasing after the next big thing, never caring about who he hurt along the way. I told him to leave, and after a while, he did. After a while, Greenspring continued to grow, and fresh roots fell apart. Ethan had overpromised to his investors, and when the farmers and restaurants started dropping out, the money dried up fast. Eventually, fresh roots filed for bankruptcy and Ethan disappeared from the scene. I heard he moved back in with his parents, that he was trying to figure out his next move. I don't know if that's true, and honestly, I don't care. I've moved on. Today, Greenspring is thriving. We're not the biggest player in the market, but we're the most trusted. The farmers know we're in this for the long haul, and the restaurants know we're not just another tech company trying to make a quick buck. I've got a team now, people who believe in the vision just as much as I do, and we're continuing to expand, carefully, sustainably, in a way that makes sense for everyone involved. Sometimes, people ask me if I'm glad Ethan stole my idea, if maybe it was a blessing in disguise because it pushed me to make Greenspring better. I don't know if I'd go that far. I wish he hadn't done it. I wish I hadn't lost a friend in the process. But I do know this. Greenspring is mine, built from the ground up, and I'm proud of what it's become. Ethan may have been first, but in the end, it didn't matter. I've learned that being first isn't what counts. It's being the one who cares enough to do it right. In the months that followed Fresh Roots' downfall, I reflected on everything that had happened. There were nights when I lay awake in bed, staring at the ceiling, unable to escape the memories of what Ethan had done. There were days when I second-guessed myself, wondering if perhaps I had been too harsh if I should have made amends and tried to find a way for both of us to move forward. But then I remembered the cold look in his eyes when he tried to justify what he'd done to me, and the anger resurfaced like a fresh wound. Some things couldn't be undone, and some betrayals left scars that didn't heal. In a strange twist, however, the story didn't quite end there. I was about a year into growing Greenspring when I got a call that would change everything, again. It was a number I didn't recognize, but I answered it anyway, as I often did these days, given that potential new opportunities seemed to present themselves at random. The voice on the other end was familiar. It was Ethan's sister, Emily. I hadn't spoken to her in years, not since we were in college and she would come to visit Ethan. She was always the sweet one, the one who would smile shyly and sit on the edge of the group, 
trying to be a part of our conversations but rarely speaking up. Hey, she said, her voice hesitant. I'm really sorry to bother you. I know you probably don't want to hear anything about Ethan, but I... I think you should know what's going on. There was something in her voice that made me pause, a kind of vulnerability that reminded me of who Ethan used to be back before everything got complicated. I listened as she explained how Ethan had hit rock bottom. After Fresh Roots collapsed, he tried to start something new, but no one would back him. Investors had lost faith, and he didn't have the resources or the connections to start over. He'd spiraled into a depression, and now he was barely scraping by, working odd jobs and trying to get his life back on track. Emily told me that Ethan had talked about me often, that he regretted everything he'd done, that he wished he could take it back, but he felt like it was too late. She wasn't asking for money or for me to take him back as a partner. She just wanted me to know that he was struggling, and that maybe, just maybe, I could find it in myself to forgive him. I didn't know what to say. A part of me wanted to hang up and forget the conversation ever happened, to stay focused on Greenspring and the future I was building. But another part of me, the part that remembered all those late nights in college, laughing over ramen and planning our future together, felt something else. Empathy, maybe. Or perhaps just sadness that it had all come to this.